Kitco Mining special coverage of Resourcing Tomorrow is brought to you by Discovery Group. Hello and welcome back to Kitco Mining with me, Paul Harris. We're at Mines and Money in London. Today we're talking about the gold space and I'm joined by Claude Bijet, private investor and a contributor of the Swiss Gold Letter. Good morning, Claude. Uh, good morning, Paul. Uh, great to be here. It's always a great conference. Uh, plenty of com companies and uh, plenty of things to learn. Well, thank you for joining us this morning. Uh, to start off, Cloud, tell us a little bit about Swiss Gold Letter, what it is and what you do. Right, well, um, a friend of mine is, uh, is much younger and, uh, and we do need younger blood in this industry. So, you know, he wanted to start a, a newsletter. So he asked me to, you know, help him out and give him a, give a few ideas that we do in common. It's very simple. We have no hidden agenda. It's a free newsletter. We just publish when we think we see a good opportunity, we just uh, publish, you know, what we think about the company, uh, and then people can do their own re research and come up with their own decision. Uh, nobody pays us. Nobody. There's no. There's no uh, hidden uh, agenda. When we were chatting yesterday, you mentioned how the, the GDX had a good move up uh, in November, and you've just recently published um, an article about how, how gold markets, bull markets start with a bank. Tell us a little bit about right. what you're seeing there. Okay, well, you know, f fundamentally, you have to understand that, I mean, all your, all your listeners know that. We've been through hell. You know, we've had a two-year bear market of huge proportion. I mean, this just never ends. Um, you know, we had this uh, this crash in 2008, big, big, uh, huge upside until 2011, then another crash <laughs> to 2015 lows where GDX hit something like twelve dollars, and then great, great 2016 went up more, practically tripled, and then another crash in 2018, going back up, the COVID crash 2020 went back up and then a slow grinding two year bear market where basically GDX was down 50%. So at that time, you know, the, the, the sentiment has had gone to really extreme levels of pessimism. Uh, if you want to measure it, you can take the daily, the DSI, the daily uh, uh, trader index. It went to a low of seven. That is very, very unusual. RSIs were down to 16. Uh, the bullish, uh, the gold miners bullish percentage went down to 3.4. I think that's the historic lows of the last 20 years. And, and, and you went to conferences, there were just nobody there. And, and the people who were there were, you know, licking their wounds. Because when, when an index is down 50%, it, mean, it means that some of your more speculative stocks are down, you know, 60, 70, 80%. So it's, uh, it's really um, pretty heavy. So since September, so the, 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 these, the sentiment was so bad, you know, September, October, that, you know, we were looking for something to change. And what uh, ca caught our attention was that there was a weekly reversal on the GDX late September. So, uh, so in October, we, we said, okay, um, we put our neck out and said, okay, uh, the bottom is in. And the confirmation came very quickly thereafter on November 4th. On November 4th, gold went up $51, which is good, so 3%. But GDX went up 11%. Now, an index, if an index goes up, you know, one, two, three percent I mean, you're pretty ecstatic. A 3% move up on, the, on an index is, is, is big. And 11% is, I haven't checked the whole data, but I think it's the, the biggest one day reversal in the history of gold mining indexes. Uh, and it's, more, it's all the more important that it came with huge volume. So I think that, uh, and the old timers in technical analysis, whatever the market, will tell you that bull markets start with a bang. I think we've had the bang. Okay, so thank you. So um, with the bang having just happened literally a month ago, what, what are the key things you're keeping your eye on now to sort of further confirm that? Right, well, what's, what's the most important is, to, is the sentiment here again. Um, 
you know, this should have been headline news everywhere. Plus 11%, we're back in a bull. So the fact that nobody really talks about it, nobody remembers the number, um, it means that this bull market is, is, is climbing the wall of worry. It's coming unnoticed. So it's like a real bull markets, they, they try to take as few people in as possible at the beginning. So in terms of sentiment, that's important. Of course, you, you keep an eye on, on the gold. Uh, uh, and I would encourage your um, auditors to uh, always also look at gold in other currencies than the dollar. But um, a key technical point was 1680 on gold. I would, I would prefer this not to be broken down once again under 1680. So I'm, I'm, I'm keeping an eye on that. And of course, um, what we all fear is that we, most gold bugs, I mean, if you're a gold bug, you know the, the debt situation, you know that there's a bubble, there was a bubble in crypto, you know there was, there's a bubble in real estate, you know there's a bubble in the stock market. So gold bugs usually expect the stock market to go down. I think we're in a major bear market. And, you know, usually when stocks go down, gold stocks go down with it. So the next, so now we're having a rally, in my view, a rally in this, in this bull market, uh, in this bear market. And once that's over, okay, it's going to turn around. It'll be important to see how the gold stocks react. Uh, I would, um, there, I think you should really watch the dollar and the interest rates. So if, if, this, if the general market goes down, but the interest rate don't keep going up or that the dollar doesn't make new highs, then I think we're, go we're gonna be okay. Because there has been periods in the history where you had um, gold stocks going up and stock markets going down. It's possible. It happened in the last inflationary cycle in the, in the 70s. Okay, well, gold's about 1,780 today, so we're about $100 above your, that, that floor you're keeping your eye on. So it's looking very positive. Let's talk about crypto. You mentioned crypto. Crypto has had a, a very wild year. In the past couple of years, it's perhaps taken some of the, the thunder away from gold and the precious metal space. But it's had a wild year and perhaps fittingly ending with a, a major meltdown in the shape of the FTX. And uh, you, you've brought uh, to our attention something in the, in the Metro, which is London's free daily newspaper. The curse of crypto is the uh, headline there. And uh, this story is actually a, similar to a Briex story about somebody high up in the crypto space dying in a helicopter crash under strange circumstances. You know. Um, Given what's happening in the crypto space, do you think we'll see people, investors, start allocating back to hard assets such as gold and out of crypto? Yeah, look, it's, it's very clear that crypto has taken a lot of dollars out of the gold market and out of the gold stocks market. So the fact that now it's less fashionable because the bubble has burst, uh, I think it's, uh, it's, pos it's positive. But uh, um, look, I'm not, I'm not a crypto expert, so I, I'm not going to dwell too much on that. OK, well, let's get back to sort of gold and gold equities in particular. Um, with the Swiss gold letter, you, you talk about, uh, you identify things that you think present good value to investors. Um, I want to get into that a bit in the moment. Um, but also as part of that, uh, I imagine you keep your eye on M&A and who are potentially good candidates for M&A. Uh, who are the, going to be the, some of the takeouts? next year. What, what kind of transactions do you think, do you think we'll see in 2023? Look, um, as, we, as, uh, as we all know, Mergen, uh, it, it was very positive for the market to, to see this activity with Yamana and all that, uh, because it, it creates an event and people get a little more bullish, you know, from starting from a very, very pessimistic view. So that's very good. Now, M&As, you will not have a lot of M&As next year. Uh, and probably not the, the year after. The M&A market really, really booms at the end of a cycle. In other terms, um, you know, big companies are like big institutions. They're like private investors like uh, you and me. Uh, they usually buy high and sell low. Okay, so we have to make a big effort to do the opposite, <laughs> but we don't always succeed in doing that. So the big, the big, um, M&A activity will be when once will be above 2,000 or 2,500 or whatever. 
Okay, thank you. Now, you mentioned that um, the gold equities have been really beaten down over the past year or so. So what are some of the, the good values that you see at the moment in the market? Yeah, look, um, when an index is down 50%, it means that a lot of stocks are down 70%. So maybe the, the first thing that, uh, that people should do is they should look at their portfolio. And when they, they, know, they, they, they know well a, a stock in their portfolio and they like it, I think the, the first thing to do is to average down, okay? Uh, you cannot average down in a, in a void, right? But now you have some indication that things are picking up. So I would say that you should concentrate on your portfolio and add where you think, where you know the company. Um, and, and importantly, to, to have not too much risk, of course, uh, to, you know, to invest in companies that still have a lot of cash so that you, you don't take the risk of, uh, of going to zero. Are there, are there any particular names that uh, you particularly like at the moment? Yeah, look, uh, in the in, in one name that everybody knows is Equinox Gold. Uh, this is a Ross Beatty company, and um, it's you know the production is something like five hundred fifty thousand ounces for this year, but they will grow to a million ounces. Now, the the only way you can make money in the market is to understand something that the, the market doesn't understand. You know, if you see a discrepancy, something unusual. Okay, now, in all markets, you want growth, right? But in today's market, because there's been some disasters in, in, uh, in, in pr production uh, uh, startups like Cote, uh, pe uh, people put a discount to growth. So for example, today, nobody wants to buy Equinox because they say, oh, they're building their Canadian mine. It's never going to work. They're going to be. But the CEO, Greg Smith, it's a new CEO. He's, he's, he, he believes he's going to be on time, on budget. So I think we'll, as this bull market evolves, I think we're going to go from uh, a penalty box for growth, where Equinox is trading at you know, 0 0.5 times NAV, to a premium to NAV. So you'll have NAV going from, let's say, 0 0.5 to 1.2 or whatever plus the, the growth. So, you know, this thing can go up five times. For a big cap, it's not bad. Excellent. Okay, now, um, as we're on the verge of coming into 2023, what do you think, uh, you know, we've got inflation, we've got recession, we've got stagflation, debt, war, all of these things. What do you think will be the key drivers for the precious metal space next year? Uh, look, uh, when a trend is in motion, um, events are interpreted positively. So. Nobody can, can you know, forecast the future. But if, if I'm right and that we are in a bull market, news will be interpreted positively. So what's important is to be in, in, in companies that has you know, huge potential. So for example, uh, there's a, now a, a, a placement that's gonna be oversubscribed on Cartier Silver. It's a small stock, it's an expiration play, but it's the same team uh, that built Eloro. And that's, you know, the world class, it's a world class discovery on silver tin in Bolivia. Uh, Bolivia is a jurisdiction that's getting much, much better. And the same dream team that made the Eloro discovery is doing exactly the same thing with, uh, with uh, Cartier Silver. So in a, in a, if somebody wants something speculative, where there's huge potential in a bull market, what goes up the most is something new that can make a big discovery. And it's the same type of geology. They're just 12 kilometers away from, uh, from, uh, from Iska Iska. Excellent. Well, I think it's going to be a fascinating year next year. Claude Bouget, private investor and contributor to Swiss Gold Letter. Thank you very much for joining us this morning. Thank you very much, Paul. And stay tuned to Kitco Mining for more from Mines & Money London. Kitco Mining's special coverage of Resourcing Tomorrow is brought to you by Discovery Group.